Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm going to try to do a series on the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the wildest book in the Bible. I mean, it is wild. It is crazy. Perhaps you people remember Saturday Night Live with Steve Martin going, well, we are two wild and crazy guys. Well, you know what? Ezekiel is a wild and crazy book. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but uh, it's uh, kind of sort of unlike any other book in the Bible in a lot of ways. It's, yeah. So let's get going. Ezekiel chapter 1. I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube. I'll be on YouTube for as long as Father allows it. And after that, I don't know. You know, sometimes the Lord closes the door and he opens the door. So we'll see what happens. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third, 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. So evidently this is during the time of the Babylonian captivity. Verse 2. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, Oh, those Hebrew names, they're rough. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Now, the Chaldeans were a part of the empire of Babylon. Verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. So evidently this is like a fire just like going kind of like in a circle, I suppose. Now, if you study the book of Exodus, the uh, during the time when Moses was uh, with the children of Israel in the wilderness, in the desert, uh, there was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud during the day. And when the cloud was stationary, everybody knew that was time to make camp and stay there. And then when the cloud started to move, everybody would break camp and follow the cloud. So... Now, I did an entire Bible study on clouds. There's a lot of symbolism of clouds in the Bible. All you got to do is click on my name. It'll take you to the home page, and then you look up playlists, which is near the top, in the middle, center. Uh, and you can look up clouds, and you can look up fire. You know, during the days of Noah, the world was baptized in water. It was cleansed. You know, what do you use to clean things? Water, right? Soap and water. Unless, of course, you go to the, you know, dry clean, but uh, that's another, never mind. Uh, so, water. Baptism. Baptism of water, right? I did a whole study on clouds. But fire, there's going to be a baptism of fire. And that's going to be in the end times. I did an entire playlist on that too. Um, and I've been looking at my playlist and I've been noticing uh, videos are being deleted. So I don't know. What can I tell you? I'm on the list. 
somebody invited me to be part of Facebook and I thought, oh, that would be a good way to, you know, help teach. And uh, it's been actually it's been a curse for the most part, if you ask me, because all the satanic people on Facebook came to my YouTube channel and started reporting all my work. So it's been a bad thing. So, yeah. But uh, I'm going to post a link to um, the fire series. And if you're interested, you can take a look at it. Fire burns up all kinds of bad stuff. That's what it does. And you know what's interesting? The first time you look up the word fire in the Bible, gives you an idea of what it's all about. Well, Genesis 19:24. Then the Lord then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So the first time fire is mentioned, it's uh, judgment upon the wicked. And what did the Lord, um, you know, and then the next time you see fire in the Bible, it's in Genesis 22, verse 6. Abraham's told to do a sacrifice with fire for a burnt offering. And then in Exodus 3, uh, verse 2, You read about the uh, the burning bush, you know that the bush that burned, but it didn't burn up. It says, "And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked in. Behold, the bush bush, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed." Now, when you get to the New Testament, the heavens and the earth are going to be burned with fire. Matter of fact. Believers are going to have a baptism of fire, oh yeah, where it's going to burn up our unfruitful works. But that doesn't mean we're going to be, um, we're not saved. Uh, the wicked will be burned, but uh, believers are going to be tried with fire also. Think about the uh, three Hebrew children, well, there are three Hebrew men that were thrown into the fire during Nebuchadnezzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the fire, and they didn't die. So, there's a lot. There's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. A lot. You know, I didn't really understand this stuff 20 years ago. But uh, every time I do a Bible study, I find something new. It seems like. All right, so. Uh, let's see. So Ezekiel 1, 4. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a bright and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. And their wings were joined one to another, and they turned not when they went, and they went every one straight forward. And as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they and uh, 
uh, they four also had the face of an eagle. Now, a lion was the uh, symbol of Judah. And there's the four standards. Well, Israel, the camp of Israel, was divided up into three tribes on the north, three on the south, three on the east, three on the west. And these are, according to legend, these are the standards of the main tribe for the north, the south, the east, and the west. Or whatever, yeah. If they were facing north. But uh, the lion was Judah. And I forget what the ox is. And the eagle, and I forget. Uh, but if you're interested, you can look it up. Oh, I guess I'll look it up. All right. According to Jewish tradition or legends, Ephraim was the main camp, and its symbol was the calf. Dan, supposedly, was the eagle. Reuben was the man, and Judah was the lion. Now, I do not know how true that is. I'm just, you know, throwing that out there because I've looked at it and seen it before. But the Bible doesn't specify to the best of my knowledge. All right, verse 11. Uh, Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies and they went everyone straight forward whither the spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went as for the likeness of the living creature their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning uh can you imagine people seeing this uh, now, there are, if you listen to those in the New Age movement, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, well, yeah, man, that, these were um, UFO aliens, yeah, you know, and they'll describe the, the throne of God as, uh, you know, the UFOs came down and were visiting, you know, the earth after they seeded the planet with life, and uh, those uh stupid uh, Neanderthals, you know, they thought that was God, but really it was UFO aliens, you know, from another world. Of course, they won't tell you where the UFO aliens from another world came from, but, uh, you know, hey, anything to uh, discredit the Lord in the Bible, right? So, verse 14, And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning, um, I'm wondering if that's like teleportation with lightning, you know. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like the color of a barrel. And they four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went... They went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whither the spirit was to go, they went. Whither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels now remember those four faced uh, living creatures well in Revelation chapter 4 uh, we got an idea of well you see them in the Old Testament now let's take a look at what the New Testament says Revelation 4 Verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, 
Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And, of course, the pre-tribbers will tell you, oh, well, this is the pre-trib rapture. Uh, I don't think so. Verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon, like a jasper and a sardine, sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, white clothing, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now, who are these four and twenty elders? Well, I did a video on it, but my guess would be each of the 12 tribes of Israel, you know, Judah, Ephraim, uh, well, you know, Joseph, uh, Naphtali, Levi, yeah, Judah, you know, the 12, the 12 patriarchs who became Israel, who were Israel. Well, that's the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Well, how about the 12 apostles? And... Sorry, not Judas, Iscariot, that is, but uh, probably Paul. That would be my guess. Some people will say Matthias, but, you know, I don't know. All I know is I believe Paul was picked by Christ himself. Matthias was picked by the apostles. I'm sure Matthias was a nice guy, but uh, I don't know. Matthias didn't really leave us any books, but Paul did. So that's my guess for the four and twenty elders. Twelve tribes of Israel, twelve apostles of the Lamb. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire, fire, burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Boy, I could do a Bible study on just the seven spirits of God. For the seven churches, right? Verse 6, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, four beasts. Now in the Old Testament, in Ezekiel, they called them living creatures. But here they're calling them beasts. Beast is not necessarily a derogatory term in light of Bible scripture were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Just like, uh, very similar to what Ezekiel saw, right? Verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why holy, holy, holy? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And you'll meet people that'll tell you, oh, the Trinity is a false doctrine. Well, I don't like the word Trinity. It's not in the Bible. But the word Godhead is. And Jesus was, in 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus had to be God. Because if he was man... Sin passed upon all mankind, which would mean he could not be the Redeemer because he would have been a, a lamb full of spots and blemishes, full of sin, just like everybody else born of, of Eve. Jesus had to be God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, Isaiah 7.14, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the Holy Spirit is called He. Yeah, there's a couple times it's called It. 
But then again, it says uh, the Bible, you know, and then they'll say, well, it proves it's not, re you know, it's not a person. Well, the Bible says he that finds a wife findeth a good thing. Is a wife a thing? Yeah, something good. That's what, you know. You know, the, the devil's kids will love to ruin your faith. That's what they're good at. So, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Man was made in God's image. Man has a body. Man has a soul. Man has a spirit. If you believe the Bible, body, soul, and spirit, three parts make up one person. A trinity, right? And then people say, oh, no, I don't believe that. Well, then you only have a body, and when you die, you die, that's it. You're just like a plant that died. You go to the ground, the worms eat you, that's it. It's over for you. You don't have a soul and spirit. See, there's a lot of devil people in this world. Honestly, I think there's a lot more devil people than there are sheep. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those bees give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down with him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The Bible records that Jesus created all things. The Bible says God created all things. Do the math, people. You know, algebra, if A, A equals B and B equals C, then A equals B, which equals C. God created all things. Jesus created all things. Jesus has to be God, period. All right, let's go back. All right, back to Ezekiel 1, verse 20. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Whither was their spirit to go? And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels remember they had four faces right and the likeness verse 22 and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was of the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above and under the firmament were their wings straight the one toward the other everyone had two which covered on this side and every one had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went I heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters as the voice of the Almighty oh you know the Bible says records it when uh, the Lord spake it was like the, the sound of many waters yeah Revelation 1 verse 15 speaking of Christ and his feet like undefined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Hmm, okay. Ezekiel 124. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament, which was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament was that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. A throne. Didn't we read about the throne in Revelation 4? Oh, yeah. As the appearance of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it now, this is probably uh christ before he had a human body my guess 
my guess is that uh, Satan had dealings with Christ in his pre-human form. And Christ probably pretended to be weak, you know, feigned weakness, which gave Satan the idea, hey, I can, I can beat this guy. I can take his place, you know. Uh, sorry, Satan, but there was no job in the um, classifieds on the newspaper that said, um, most high God position available, uh, inquire within. Uh, it didn't happen. So, sorry, that position's been filled. No longer available. You're not qualified. All right, verse 27. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire and it had brightness round about. Remember when uh, Christ went up to the mountain? I think he was with Peter and John. And they saw Elijah and Moses. And uh, Jesus glowed with brightness. Oh, yeah. Verse 28. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. People, let me tell you something. If you hear people say, Shekinah is the glory of the Lord, run. Run as fast as you can. Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, that's one spelling. Shekinah is uh, from the uh, it's from the you know who's magic and witchcraft and they'll tell you that uh, it's the goddess the queen of heaven who is the holy spirit yeah yeah the queen of heaven sorry the the bible speaks of the holy spirit as being a he he, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, when you start hearing she kinda, that comes from the other camp. Seriously, the she kinda has got a lot of different names. Columbia, Isis, Ishtar, Easter. And then they'll tell you, oh yeah, Shekinah, that's the glory of the Lord. Oh, praise, praise the Lord. They're talking about a different Lord. Seriously. That comes from the you-know-who crowd. Uh, if you drive a cab and you worship Allah, you know, Cab and Allah, that crowd. Cab, Allah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to be real careful in the way I pronounce things. So, don't want the censors to get me. One more strike and I'm out of here. You know, just like baseball, three strikes you're out. Well, I got two. And I was never a big baseball fan. Uh, Dad wanted me to be a baseball player when I was a kid. And uh, Dad was actually uh, drafted in the minors, the minor baseball leagues. But then the Japanese decided they wanted to uh, bomb Pearl Harbor, and uh, Dad lied about his age and got into the Army. Of course, back then, the Army didn't ask too many questions, you know. I don't know if I've told you this story before, but uh, dad was telling me a story. There was a kid, uh, you know, there was a bunch of people uh, in the enlistment station and they had the doctor looking at everybody, you know, their bodies, making sure that they were fit for battle. And one kid had, one boy had no pubic hair, none. And the doctor looked at this skinny little runt and said, son, how old are you? He said, I'm 18, sir. 
doctor looked at him and says, well, come back when you're 25. <laughs> you know, how old was the kid? Probably 11 or 12. Wanted to go fight. Oh, boy. Yeah, come back when you're 25, child. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, dad lied about his age. So, to get into the army. Another worthless war we were tricked into, right? So... Oh, uh, where was I going? Oh, okay. Yeah, Dad was drafted by the miners in the baseball. And uh, he always said, yeah, three strikes, you're out. Well, Bob's got two strikes on YouTube, so. All right, Ezekiel 128. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the likeness roundabout. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face. And I heard a voice of one that spake. All right, so that's the end of chapter one. God willing, we will finish this series. God willing, I will be on YouTube as long as God the Father wills it. And when YouTube deletes me, I don't know if or where I'm going to go. Maybe the Lord will open a door. I don't know. What can I tell you? All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.